welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Dickamax. It's a tier 6 German premium tank destroyer. It's located on the south spawn of Malinovka and this one is under the command of Heavy 999. Or as uh, Klaus would say, 999! Okay, it's armed with a 105mm gun. It's quite powerful. It can do 300 alpha and it'll penetrate through 169 millimeters of armor. It is basically a fairly unique tank destroyer because they only built two of these. It was the it was known as the Panzer Sebspala Theater Fear. That's 4A. Now you may, you may recall that the the B is the RT and the C is the Death Toaster. So there were three vehicles, all with this name. He's going for him again. This time he gets him. It was helpful that uh, one of our teammates actually got a hit on him, but uh, Heavy 999 takes away the kill. Reload time is quite quick. It's normally 8.92. Oh, he's got another kill, T43. But um, you can see Heavy's got it down to 7.3. Now it's quite a slow vehicle because it's um, got quite an underpowered engine. Uh, originally it was going to have a fairly high performance engine. But they thought that was a bit of a waste putting a big Maybach engine in there when they could put a small Maybach engine instead. And that's why Dickamax, or Fat Max as it became known, was quite slow. They were built by Krupp. There was two of them. The first one was lost in action in June of 1941. It was on route to uh, with its um, battalion and it caught fire. Uh, it may have been the heat, it may have been some other reason, but uh, the uh, inside of the vehicle caught fire. The crew abandoned the vehicle and it kept moving as it, was, uh, as it burst into flames. And then the ammunition caught fire and the thing blew up altogether. And there wasn't a lot left of the vehicle after that happened. It was unrecoverable because the inside of the vehicle had been torn to shreds. Now, as a premium tank destroyer, it's actually quite good because it does have some good features. It's got the second best gun depression in the game, which is uh, 15, millimeter, uh, 15 degrees. And it's also got a fairly good arc of fire. And he's got another kill. Just took out the Super Hellcat. Yeah, it's got an eight, uh, 8 degrees either side of the center line, which gives you 16 degrees in total, which is not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's comparable to the Stura Mill. And the Stura Mill is the Panzer Sebspana Feta Fumpf. So it's, um, yes, this one's the Sebspana Feta 4, and the Stura Mill's the 5. And he's got another kill. Took out the SU-100 this time. Now this this tank destroyer should never be underestimated. Although it doesn't have much in the way of armor, 15 millimeters at the front. That's the best you're going to get. It's based on the hull of the Panzer IV, but it's a modified Panzer IV. It wasn't designed uh, based off a tank hull as such. It was just they used bits that were available. Ah, uh, he hit that uh, Patriot, but he didn't kill it. So it was actually um, actually quite heavy. Uh, the the gun, which is a Schwer um, artillery, it's, it's, um, if I remember correctly, the word it's um, Schwer, arti um, Schwer artillery. It's the heavy artillery gun, not the um, the light one. It's not the 105mm that you find actually in the um, Sebs Falafeta Fear B. It's actually the, a slightly heavier gun, the heavy artillery version. And it was originally um, going to be, they were originally going to use the, um, the 105mm L18 gun, but instead they went to the KL52 gun instead. So it's actually quite a powerful gun. It's a 105mm Canonan 18, yeah. 
I think the original decisions were that they would actually take a lot of the flat guns and convert them into artillery pieces instead. He's trying to get a shot on that Cromwell, but unfortunately the T-44 was going around him and unfortunately blocked his shot on that one. Oh, but he didn't block that one. It went straight through the wood and into the side of the uh, Cromwell and took him out. And that was a Cromwell B as well. The not much difference between a Cromwell and a Cromwell B, other than the um, the ability to gain traction on the ground. That's why Cromwell Bs will all accelerate faster. Well, there are three tanks up on the enemy at the moment. Now, the original purpose of this tank destroyer was to knock out bunkers. It was a fortifications destroyer. It was quite tall, actually. That's one of the drawbacks of this vehicle. It stands up quite high which means obviously it's um, much easier to see for the enemy. But apparently during the war, the enemy didn't see it much at all. In fact, they didn't even know it was in existence. Because as I said, there was only two of them built. Both of them went to the Soviet Union. Both took part in Bob Barbarossa. But the first one was destroyed by fire. And the second one was successfully carried out on operations until it, I think it killed something like 21 J Soviet tanks including KV-1s and the like. And um, it's, there's quite an unusual story regarding that as well, because you see, they didn't believe that this vehicle was killing as many tanks as it was. Because the, the people who were actually commanding the vehicle and, and using it, <coughs> excuse me, were actually um, reporting back all the kills, but uh, and they, they were telling the people they were killing KV-1s and uh, other tanks, that any tank that they came across, and uh, they were getting good results and penetrating the armour, but the the headquarters didn't believe that this vehicle was actually doing the damage that it was doing. And so it was decided during the war that because the Soviets were building uh, much more powerful tanks, uh, that they would uh, instead make an even more powerful tank destroyer. And that's how the Stura Mill came about. Because that was the Panzer Sebsfalafeta Fumpf, as I said, the next version up. And that was uh, armed with a 128mm gun. And the stock gun on the Stura Mill is the same gun on this one. So there they were. They tried building the Stura Mill, built two of them, using the parts that were available at the time. The uh, I think it was the parts in the VK3601H. And they put together, or was it the 3001H? But they put together the tank destroyer with the parts they had. And he's got another kill, a T-44 this time. That means he's got his top gun. And this tank just kept on running and it kept on taking out Soviet tanks. And the Wehrmacht just couldn't believe that it was doing it. They did not believe that they were actually getting the kills. But the crew knew that they were doing it. The Soviets didn't even know this tank existed until the British told them it existed. What happened was that the British got intelligence from the uh, Enigma intercepts, uh, which included all the details of the German uh, tanks that were in operation in, in a particular area near Stalingrad. Because uh, this, this tank and the Stura Mills were working in that area. And they gave the intelligence to the Soviets and said, you've got this tank destroyer because it was listed. And they gave them the, the details that the Germans actually had from their records because they transmitted it to their headquarters, what we've got in operation. And this was one of the vehicles they had in operation. But um, the Soviets said, we've never seen this vehicle. Oh, he's been seen. And there he is, it's the IKV-90B. This is where he uses his gun depression to good effect. Yep, nice hit there, high roll, 330. That IKV-90 is in big trouble now. Oh, but he fought the charioteer fires one right into the side. I don't think Heavy was happy about that, but he's decided to motor closer to the IKV-90. Anyway, so the um, getting back to the story, and there goes the IKV-90. That's seven kills. Yeah, what happened was that... Uh, oh, the 45 TP just got taken out by the charioteer. He's the last enemy tank in the game. So, um, one of the vehicles was already knocked out. The other Dickamax was racking up the kills. And nobody heard anything more from it until 
November of 1942, when suddenly it disappeared from the list of the, the German tanks. And they think that what happened was it was destroyed in action sometime during that period. And that's why they never heard of it again. It, was, uh, it must have actually, they found a wreck uh, and they took it, somebody took a picture of it. And it was a Dickamax. And it had been hit in the front, so it received damage from an enemy vehicle, which they patched up and must have got it back into operation. But eventually the vehicle was abandoned and it might have been abandoned because it ran out of fuel or it might have been abandoned through mechanical failure and they just couldn't recover it. Can you get this for a Dickama uh, for a Radley's? Yes! Radley Waters and wins the game. He's sitting in the cap, so he got some cap points as well. Here's the end of battle results, and that was the first ace tank of a heavy 999 in the Dickamax. A tank that gets generally derided by Klaus, because he doesn't think much of it, because he calls it Dick uh, Max. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it is a very good tank destroyer, comparable to the Sturm Mill. Well, that was the first ace tanker. He managed to get a demolition expert because he blew up one of the tanks he killed. He also picked up a fire for effect for doing more damage to the hit points for his own vehicle. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got six. And he also got some medals, some epic medals. He got a Radley Waters medal for getting at least eight kills. He also picked up a Lonan's medal for killing at least two enemy tanks or tank destroyers in the tank destroyer. And they have to be at least two tiers high. So this is the... And in fact, actually, he did kill during that game a Patriot. And I'm looking for the other one. Um, don't think it was the T-29, because that's tier seven. Uh, one of these enemy tanks is two tiers higher. And I'm thinking it might have been that Charioteer, actually. I think it is the Charioteer. Yes, these are the higher tier tanks. He also picked up a top gun for getting at least six kills, but I don't see a high caliber. We'll have a look at that after we've seen the win eight. It's 7,781. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage, and that's why he didn't get the high caliber. The charioteer got that, actually, funnily enough. He got high caliber top gun and tank sniper for 5,725 hit points. So he did very well indeed. And uh, the next highest damage in the game was the Scorpion, 3,798 hit points. And then the next one after that is the Cromwell B that he took out. That guy had 2,706 hit points. And you can see the next one after that. So fourth place went to Heavy 999 with 2,220 hit points. When it came to kills, though, he had the top. He had eight kills in that game. The Chariot here only had seven. So he was one short of getting his uh, Radleys. So that must have been a bit, bit off, off for him. He must have been a bit disappointed. He didn't get the one player who he could have taken out and, and could have actually then walked off with the Radleys. Uh, three, uh, three kills went to the Scorpion and also to the Cromwell B. And when it came to base XP, it was definitely heavy 999 with 1,318 XP. 1,120 went to the Scorpion, 1,108 went to the T-20, who also picked up a patrol duty in that game. And these were the only three players who managed to get over a 1,000 base. But you must submit that the enemy were doing well, because their Cromwell B, actually, and their Charioteer were very close to um, the guys who managed to get managed to get 1,000. And they were better than all the other players on the enemy team because uh, it was only these three who actually managed to better the enemy team. Let's have a look at detail. 23 shots fired, 16 direct hits and 12 penetrations. You only get 26 rounds of ammunition. So he was very close to running out. He only had three rounds left at the end of the game and none of them were armor piercing. 2,220 hit points of which 1,702 were at more than 300 meters. It can shoot long range accurately as well as short range. It's much more effective at short range, but obviously if you can shoot long range, it's better because, of course, this thing doesn't have any armor, as I said. The most of armor is on the front of the hull. It's only 50 millimeters. The sides are only 20 millimeters. Anything that hits it's more than likely going to do some damage. So you really don't want to be seen by the enemy if you can help it. 
He did receive one hit. It was a penetration. That came from the charioteer, and he was lucky that he survived that one. Two enemy vehicles spotted. Ten enemy vehicles damaged. Eight kills. So he could have got, uh, in theory, a pulse medal if he'd actually managed to kill everything he hit. And 812 hit points of damage assistance. He also got 21 capture points because he was sitting in the cap at the end, effectively tempting the charioteer to come back and uh, give him another chance. 62,343 credits from the game after repair, ammunition, respawn, and consumables took away a loss, actually, because he used a lot of premium ammo and could, consequently he actually ended up with a loss of 36,454 credits. Yeah, I know it's quite a lot, but it was actually a combination of the ammo and the consumables that did it, uh, to be honest. Yeah, 40,000 consumables, 55,000 ammo. It's quite expensive, but it was worth it for the result because it was his first ace tanker in this vehicle and a Radley as well. And can't turn that down. 1,977 XP times two for the first victory, 593 for this being a premium vehicle and 4,547 experience points altogether. This vehicle does actually make quite a good trainer for the Sturmil and the other German uh, tank destroyers. So it's it's worthwhile having it um, one of these for that purpose. But I actually used it when I had my Dick Max for training purposes. So, you know, to actually get my um, crews up to speed and, um, and also for plinking practice as well, because you can really heavily damage the enemy. It's got that lovely 50 15 degrees of gun depression which makes it very difficult for the enemy to get a return shot into you you just abuse them and take advantage of their their weaknesses and just keep lumping these huge bits of metal into them at, um, which then of course makes them fall apart and blow up like uh, you saw with heavy 999 I wish I could actually tell you more about the um, the Dikamax in terms of that it was a happy ending and that the Soviets captured it and uh, and brought it back. Well, they did capture it. They got a photograph of a, a Soviet officer on top of one of the uh, the the only surviving or the only Dikamax that was found. Um, as I said, it was abandoned. Uh, it wasn't operational, and unfortunately, it was scrapped. They didn't know the what the vehicle was. They had no idea. They had to look over it. They saw that it was basically disabled and it had been hit before, um, but they didn't think it was of any importance. And so unlike the Stura Mill, which actually ended up in Kubinka, the Dikamax was actually scrapped. It was uh, torn to pieces with acetylene torches and wrecked and taken for the scrap metal. Which is a great pity because this was actually quite an interesting little tank destroyer. It was a small tank destroyer. It actually had a decent gun. It was getting good penetration. And despite the fact that the Wehrmacht didn't believe the crews that they were actually getting good results, they were killing a lot of Soviet tanks with a very low caliber gun instead of a high caliber gun. I think it was um, the very fact that the Soviets didn't know that these tank destroyers were about is testament to the fact that uh, they didn't realize what was killing their tanks. Um, certainly some of the Soviet tanks that were killed were actually disabled and um, wrecked and then they were recovered by their own forces later on um, when night time fell. So um, I, it may very well be that the Soviets had no idea that this vehicle was around and if they had reported how successful it was I think the Germans might have actually gone ahead and built this thing but they didn't so that's why the Dikamax basically was a failure because it wasn't mass produced whilst other tank destroyers like the Su-152 and, and uh, the Su-100 were mass-produced and they worked. Um, so great pity that because uh, the Germans did need tank destroyers and the, the first tank destroyer they got after this one was the uh, Sturmil as I said and that was captured and after that it was the Ferdinand. Um, so they had to wait some time before they got purpose-built tank destroyers and uh, this might have been a good solution because apparently it was knocking out a lot of Soviet tanks. Anyway, I hope you like that um, uh, that little history lesson on this vehicle. There's a lot to, about the Dikamax actually um, in, in public knowledge, but uh, I'm afraid most players on World of Tanks don't actually play it, or if they do play it, they, they don't play it very well and they dislike it, and that's why it gets a bad reputation. But it is a good tank destroyer, I must admit, I do like it. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And 
please do let other people know that not only have we got this channel, but we've got another one. And on that channel, there's replays without any commentary, but they are fantastic games. Thanks for watching.